Now, I was initially very worried that the final duel between... Dune Part 2 has dropped, so now it's time to properly review Denis Villeneuve's conclusion to his adaptation of Dune. Dune Part 2 impressed me with being able to be an action-packed war film, but also not missing out on the inner dialogue of its characters. This movie is longer than Part 1 and has a lot more going on, but because of the first film's setup, it is able to not busy itself with such matters. There are new characters in this film, sure, but we get to focus on them and their development instead of focusing on their worlds because the worlds they live in are already developed. Denis Villeneuve and his team are not new to delivering very impressive and diverse visuals, and they bring this to the forefront in this film. Dune Part 1 roughly stuck with the same look because they were playing it safe. The, this film, Dune Part 2, is all over the place, but with purpose, whether it's the eclipsed raid scene with its deep orange or the stark whites of the Harkonnen arena. As far as action is concerned, this movie delivered on every level, whether it's the one-on-one -on -one knife fights or the army of sandworms. Now, I was initially very worried that the final duel between Paul Atreides and Fade Ratha was going to be short and underwhelming, but I was wrong, thank goodness. This scene shows the skill and speed of these two fighters, and shows that Fade is more than just an actor when it comes to wielding a knife. The performances from the cast are all great, but the standout is Austin Butler as Fade Rautha. The Baron's favorite nephew is a creepy and vicious villain that is great for this movie. And all the villains in this film, including Rautha himself, had great demises in different ways. Paul killing the weakened Baron, Gurney getting his revenge by killing the Beast Raban, or Paul outwitting his cousin in the final fight. Now this is where I'll get nitpicky. There was a character, Thufir Howitt, the Atreides Mentat, who disappeared in the first film and was nowhere to be found in the second. I have not read the book all the way through to cover the events covered in Dune Part 2, but it's a loose end. I will also say that I wasn't too satisfied with the way that the Emperor was portrayed in this film. From what I've read and heard, Shaddan IV Carino is supposed to appear to be the same age as Duke Leto Atreides, but he is the same age as he looks in this film. I don't think Christopher Walken should have played him, and as far as the Emperor's costume is concerned, it was very underwhelming because it was noticeably bland and lazy compared to everybody else's costume. However, these are only scratches in the film's shining armor. Dune Part 2 is an epic and amazing and satisfying conclusion to Denis Villeneuve's adaptation of Frank Herbert's classic sci-fi novel. It has great action, performances, dialogue, but is accompanied by a few minor issues. If you liked part one, you will love part two, and I'm also very happy to say that this is truly an epic film that the sci-fi genre needed. Dune part two gets a 9.2 out of 10. Hello everyone, welcome back to Movies with Michael, and if you enjoyed this movie review, you can show by leaving a like on this video, commenting down below what you thought about this movie, do you love it, do you hate it, or is it right there in between, and please remember to subscribe to this channel and click the notification icon to be notified about my latest videos. That's all for now, and I'll see you all next time.